Hi everyone, my name is Maud and I am here today to talk to you a little bit about classical singing. Uh, we're going to be talking about a variety of things over the course of a few lessons, but today we're going to start with song and then we're going to move into opera. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself to start off with and a little bit about why I've picked this particular set of things to talk to you about. And I hope you find it really interesting and I hope you learn something. Uh, so I spent many, many years being a professional opera singer. I trained at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London and then I tra travelled all over the world singing with various companies including Opera Holland Park, who uh, have very kindly got me involved with this project. After a couple of years I realised that singing wasn't for me and so I retrained as a secondary English teacher. So I have been working in schools like yours for many years now um, and focusing on literature and the interpretation of poetry and literature and words. Uh, so this is very much the angle that I want to approach music from today. I think one of the things I hear a lot from the kids that I speak to about classical music in particular is I don't understand what they're talking about, why is it all in a different language, none of it makes any sense, none of it's relevant to me. And my dream with this is to get you guys to see that these are amazing creations, people who feel the same things that you feel now hundreds and hundreds of years ago um, and they're creations by writers and by musicians just like if you read um, Shakespeare in school or if you read any novelist or any poet um, they all have the same kind of impetus which is to interest you, to excite you and to give you something which takes you out of yourself a little bit. So over the course of a few sessions, I hope that we're going to get a chance to visit lots of different women in opera. But today, the woman I want to interest you, introduce you to, sorry, is a woman called Gretchen, or in German, Gretchen. <laughs> I can never say it. And the piece is called Gretchen am Spinnrader, which means Gretchen at the spinning wheel. So this is a really cool piece. It's been one of my favourites forever. Um, and what's amazing about it is there is just a voice and a piano. And the piano plays the role of the spinning wheel all the way through this piece. You'll hear every time we start singing, all the piano does is it goes And this is the sound of someone spinning, right? And sitting at the spinning wheel and singing. And Gretchen is really interesting because this piece comes, um, and this is why I've chosen this one to start with, it's the beginning of a love story, right? And I'm hoping to go through all the stages of a love story with you guys, but it's the beginning of a love story. And here, she is, she's just met Faust who is the man that she has fallen desperately in love with. Um, and everything that she does revolves around him in this moment. But it's really interesting because she's not joyful necessarily. I think a lot of Gretchen in this, in this song is like very freaked out by how much she feels for him, by how in a moment everything has changed and suddenly she kind of feels like she's living for him. And it's a, it's a little bit trapped, it's a bit claustrophobic. And there's this refrain which comes back over and over again which we're going to do in a second, um, but it's the first thing you hear and it comes back after every thought and the words are Meine Ruhe ist hin, mein Herz ist schwer, ich finde, ich finde sie nimmer und nimmer mehr, which is German and it means um, my, my, my peace is gone, everything that was peaceful about me, gone, I am a ball of nerves, um, mein Herz ist, ist schwer means my heart is heavy. So not only is she feeling manic and anxious, she's also feeling incredibly depressed in this moment. She feels weighed down by what's happened. Ich finde sie nimmer mehr means I will never find it ever, ever again. So she feels in this moment like everything has changed since she's met Faust. Um, and you can just hear her obsessing and obsessing and this comes back over and over. So in the course of this uh, little mini lesson, we're going to do little interjections from the music and I will sing. I hope it doesn't distort too much. Also, you're going to have to forgive me because I have not been a professional opera singer for many years now. Um, but I think I should do a decent enough job with my backing track to show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to do just the first couple of lines just so you can hear that refrain. Then we're going to talk about the next section where she gives us her first thought about why this is. Oh, and I remember what I was going to say to you. I like to think of this bit as as being very confessional, almost like, I don't know if you've ever seen those things where like someone is in a bunker and they're kind of like talking into the camera and they're like, oh my God, he's outside. I don't know if he's coming for me. It's that kind of slightly Blair Witchy sort of feel. Um, she's definitely saying like, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm panicking, I'm losing my mind. So maybe that'll come across. Okay, 
so that's phrase one. Um, she, you can hear how it goes up and up and it builds up to never and never more. Nimma, nimma me. I'm never going to find my peace again. I'm stuck. I'm going to love him forever. And that, did you hear that piano? Do, 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 do. So that's her spinning as she's thinking. Um, and we're going to hear this all the way through. But the first thought she has when she comes to quantify this, the next bit, is she says, um, you know, when I don't have him, when I don't have him, for me, it's the grave. I'm basically dead if I'm not with him. Sounds super dramatic, but um, I've certainly remembered having those kinds of crazy thoughts at some point or another. Um, when I first met someone I really liked, it's that sense of like, oh my God, am I even alive if I'm not with this person? Like, what do I do? Just sit in my room, scrolling through Instagram. Um, what's the point? Um, and, and she says, you know, the whole world, die ganze Welt ist mir Geld. everything is bitter to me. And then she has uh, another, towards the end of this section, another really lovely big high bit where she says, my head is crazy. My my arm kopf ist mir verrückt. My brain has gone mad. Um, my my poor my my poor body is broken. Everything is broken by by this encounter with this man, who she's fallen in love with. Um, so and then and then you'll hear there's a little break, and then we come back to my ist in my heart is schwer. And I think this time, the second time you hear it, it's much more like oh my god. My peace is gone. My heart is heavy. I'm never going to find that again. The first time it's kind of like, oh, my peace is gone. This time it's like, whoa, I've just realised that this is not just me talking uh, in the abstract. This is happening to me. I'm stuck. Um, I'm with this guy forever. So let's uh, hope I can pick it up and we'll carry on from there. <laughs> So second thought, first thought you had, and then we get back into that refrain again the first time. So she'd gone through this moment of like, oh, it really is gone. I really am stuck. I do really love this man. There's no escaping it. And to be fair, like, I think she's being pretty dramatic because she's only just met him today. But I think she's meant to be 14 or something. And this is obviously ages ago. If any of you have read Romeo and Juliet or anything like that, they get super dramatic about falling in love and immediately being really in love. So that bit is maybe a little bit uh, fast. That wouldn't necessarily happen after the first Tinder date uh, in our generation. But I still think that it's 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 relevant for that first stage of the relationship. It's relevant for that feeling of um, anxiety and fear and love all kind of mixed together. And I think it's it's really important if you listen to the way the lines go, that she suddenly says... Um, you know, my head is, my head is, um, is gone crazy and my whole body is, is broken, everything's fallen apart. And she, she does that really big and really high, like a big whale. And then she comes back down to the bottom and she kind of deflates. And there's this sense that, oh God, I'm really, I'm really stuck now. Um, so the next thought that she has, uh, it's the same structure again. She says, nach ihm nur schau ich zum Fenster hinaus, which means without him, I don't even look out the window. He's the only one I'm looking out the window for, which is pretty bleak because I imagine before this, she was looking out the window at the birds and the sky and all the people passing by. Now, none of it, doesn't care. All she does is spins on her little spinning wheel, looks out the window and thinks, where is he? Is he coming? So super excitement there for him, but also she feels like it's taking over her life and she's not sure she likes that. And I respect that about Gretchen. You know, she, she's not sure she wants to give herself over to a man entirely. Um, she obviously has been taken over by a man entirely, but she's fighting it all the time. Um, and it's, she's then she says, nach ihm nur gehe ich aus dem Haus. So only for him do I even leave the house. Um, so this is, I think, a very pertinent thought in lockdown. Uh, Gretchen is, is stuck in her house all the time. She's not going anywhere. The only time she wants to leave is to go for a nice socially distanced walk with Faust in the park. <laughs> um, she, she only leaves the house to try and catch sight of him. She feels like she's completely trapped, completely claustrophobic, completely stuck. But she gets these reprieves where she gets to go and see if she can find Faust. Um, and then she starts to get into a big fantasy. 
she starts to think about what he looks like and she fancies him a lot. So she says, uh, Sein hoher Gang, sein edle Gestalt, seines Mundes Lächeln, seine Augen Gewalt und seine Rede Zauberfluss. Um, so these are all the parts of his body that she loves and she's thinking about. So one, um, she's like, oh, the way he walks is so sexy. Um, oh, you know, the way his face is, it looks so great. And then she starts to think about his mouth and she's like, oh, the way he smiles. Um, and then she thinks about the, the way that he speaks, the magic of his words. And as it goes higher and higher, um, the magic of the way he's speaking to me. She really likes it when he says nice things to her, uh, don't we all? And then she says, she says, sein Händedruck und ach, sein Kuss. So she goes through like, you know, the feeling of his hands and then finally, what it was like to kiss him. And then she has a little moment where she kind of can't break out of that. She, it's the only time that the spinning wheel goes wrong. So she's singing it and she goes, sein Kuss. She's really excited about the kiss. And there's a big, what's called a fermata in music, which means a big pause where she just kind of stops. And then the the piano stops for the only time. And then it goes, dum, dum, do 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 dum, dum, do 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 And it builds up really, because she is fumbling, like she's lost her rhythm. She can't do her usual like fast pedaling because she's completely distracted. This happens twice. And then she kind of gets it back together and do 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 And then, um, off she goes again into her same my novel is in my, my piece is gone everything's broken um, and I think in this one it's almost like this this wild acceptance it's kind of exciting it's she's gone through all of this so she's worked herself up to the point where she's thinking about loving him and what it was like to kiss him and she's less panicky about the loss of control and she's kind of embraced it a little bit more so we'll do as far as that and then we'll do the final verse which is the one where she really goes nuts um, I think I'm right on the verge of starting, so I might just have to kick off straight away. Okay. Nach ihm nur schau ich zum Fenster hinaus, nach ihm nur geh ich aus dem Haus, sein Hohlgang, sein edle Gestalt, seines Mundes Lächeln, seiner Rolle. Okay, so, did you see there, going through the kind of, oh, I, I, I can only leave the house for him, into oh, his face, his mouth, his everything, his kiss. And that is the thing which breaks everything for her. And then she's kind of, she's in a different place. She's got to the point where actually maybe it's quite an exciting thing to have your piece broken up. Because, I, I mean, can you imagine what the life was like for this seamstress girl, probably in rural Germany, um, you know, spending all of her days sewing on the sewing wheel, maybe going for little walks, maybe tending some cows, getting some milk, some eggs. I mean, I don't know, I'm not a 13th century German milkmaid, but the point is that her life was small, not much was happening. So I think that this first change, you know, meeting someone new, someone exciting, someone that gives you a reason to like, get out of your comfort zone. I think she really loves that by the end of it. Um, and she gives herself into this complete abandon of being in love, which I think is pretty, pretty, mm, realistic in a lot of ways and I think the music really reflects that so the last thought that she has the final section is when she says I'm being 
cold towards him. She says, mein Busen drängt sich nach ihm hin, which literally means my bosom pulls me towards him. So to try and translate that in a slightly less insane way, it's this idea that like her heart and her chest is kind of pulling her towards this man. She can't, she's magnetized towards him. So mein Busen drängt sich nach ihm hin. And then she says, ach, dürft ich fassen und halten ihn. So I just want to hold him and uh, to attack him and give him a great big hug. If only I could just put my arms around him, if I could fasten and halten him and stop him and, and then und küssen him and kiss him. So wie ich wollt, as much as I want to, I just want to go up to him and I want to hug him and I want to kiss him. Um, and then she gets well dramatic, uh, as all opera heroines do towards the end. And she says, you know, when I have his kisses, I will die. His kisses will kill me. I will die of pleasure. I'll be so happy that I will just die. Um, and you'll hear as we go up and up, she gets higher and higher and higher, more and more excited. So cover your ears if you don't like high, loud notes, because <laughs> there are going to be a few in a little while. And then she also is exhausted by that burst. So she gets to the end of like, with his kisses, I will die. And then everything slows down. The piano playing the, the spinning wheel slows down, slows down, slows down. Until eventually she's just, my no hoistin, my heart is schwer. Like my peace is gone. <laughs> I'm a broken woman. Um, and that's the end of the aria. So let's see if we can get through to the end of that and see what you think of it. My bosom drank sich nach ihm hin, ach dürft ich fassen und halten ihn und küssen ihn, so wie ich wollt, an seinen Küssen vergehen sollt, du könnt ich ihn küssen, so wie Okay, so I may have gone a bit over dramatic at the end there with the very broken Gretchen. Um, probably singers wouldn't generally go quite so off the voice on the end, as we call it. But I think it's illustrating a point, which is that she is completely flawed by this whole experience. Um, and I think that's something that we, the most of us, can relate to. Um, whether that's a life-consuming crush on someone that we uh, love and are going to marry, like I am, or whether that is a life-affirming crush on the boys from the k-pop bands in korea <laughs> as many of my students have at the moment so um i hope that's given you some kind of sense of what opera lyrics or, or classical music lyrics are like this is actually from a poem by goethe so it's actually um it was literature before it was music but um i think the setting of it is really magical and it does a lot for the music so the last couple of minutes, and do feel free to turn off if you've had enough and you don't want to do this, I thought it'd be cool to just go all the way through and just, it's two and a half minutes long, or three and a half minutes long, sorry. Um, if you get bored, please do feel free to, as I said, go and do something else. Um, I, I just want to go all the way through so you can hear exactly what it feels like to see it as a live performance. And then hopefully you guys will have some thoughts about that. If you have any questions, do let me know, get in touch. I would love to respond to anything you have to say. And it would also be lovely at some point to maybe get to do a live session so that I can take your questions as I go. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've really enjoyed it. And this uh, in its entirety is uh, Franz Schubert's Gretchen am Schwingrader. Meine Ruhe ist hin, mein Herz ist schwer. Ich finde, ich finde den immer und nimmer mehr. Wo ich ihn nicht hab, ist mir das Grab. Die ganze Welt ist mir vergelt. Ich finde, ich 
Thank you very much, everyone. That has been absolutely gorgeous. That's it playing again. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And that is me clocking out for today. I'm Maud. It's been great to speak to you. Uh, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.